Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me introduce myself. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes at the Columbia County Library in Evans, Georgia, the Harlem Library, and also Uchi Creek, now Grovetown Library with our new library building and everything. Yay. Very glad that we have that. I'm very glad that you're here with me today. So today's class is going to be photo fun, fun, um, bleh, photography <laughs> fundamentals and cloud backup. So we're going to be talking about looking at our different uh, sections, doing a little bit of basic editing with our fig, our, our, um, our um, excuse me, my brain is flying out the window. So we're going to be working on our photos, organize, organizing them, talking about cloud backing them up. I also might send you in a little bit of the direction of working on a uh, collage is what we're going to work on as well and also some printing a little bit now we this is kind of viewed as a part of a three or four part class so la yesterday we did actually our photography fundamentals our photography for beginners getting you ready talking about the rule of thirds and everything composition using our camera all that kind of great stuff and then this is kind of about organizing backing up our pictures and we do have a class on Thursday which will be about editing our pictures more than what we edit them today so you'll do some more advanced editing kind of like Photoshop but we be using the free software GIMP so come join me for that and that also will discuss uh, printing as well so we won't discuss that in this class anymore because it has its own class so as you kind of come into the classroom and everything I'll say hello and welcome to class. Very glad you're here and I'll go ahead and talk about some of the other things that we have coming up. So of course I always want to start off class with feel free to post any questions that you have into the chat and I also want everybody to know that I'm very happy that you're here and how can I help, okay? Let's talk about our schedule for the month and I'll disappear here so you can see it a little bit easier. So as you see, we've been doing our photography classes. And of course we're doing our advanced editing and layers tomorrow and also join us tomorrow um, on the Grovetown Facebook page. We're gonna be doing our Google Suite class, which covers a lot of things about the Google software and everything, Google Docs, and talking about that. Now, next week we're going to be talking about using Libby. So, if you did get a new device for you want to do ebooks and audiobooks and stuff, uh, uh, join us for that one. We'll be talking about free ebooks and audiobooks from the library. Yay! <laughs> and also, uh, next week we'll be finishing up part two to our class that we had this morning cord cutting with the antenna. We'll be having code cording with our streaming service talking about free and paid apps and devices. Okay. We'll be doing those, those classes again on the 20th in the afternoon and then on the 21st. So if you are looking for an all day cord cutting, come stop by here. Join us on the, the Facebook page on the Harlem and learn about cord cutting with streaming. And then on the 20th in the afternoon, learn about antennas. Okay. So we've kind of broken that class up into two and then near the end of the month every every library is going to get a great day of gadget help on their Facebook page so come join us for that and if I don't get a ton of questions then I'll get into talking about uh, talking about other resources we have like Libby and stuff we also have a chess class near the end of the month and we're also doing instapot class from my, live from my kitchen so come join me for that on the Grovetown Facebook page on uh, the 28th and the 28th in the afternoon on the Facebook page for the Columbia County Library where we're talking about our new air fryer that I got for the holidays. Our library is open with limited services and hours. Curbside holds pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call in the library questions Monday through Friday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. So come join us for that. And let's go ahead and let's rewind here and we'll start our subject today. So we're doing our Photoshop, excuse me, we're doing photography fundamentals and stuff. So let me go ahead and pull that up and I'll post it 
into our chat. So is there any questions so far? Today we're going to be using our Windows uh, Photos uh, app that comes with Windows. One of the interesting things about this is that it actually does uh, come free with the Windows, but you may or may not realize that it is available. Now, I am going to actually post the handout into the chat. All right, so it's loading. So just give me a moment. <laughs> loading, loading, loading. All right, now. Place that into our chat. And welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Very glad that you're here with me today. All right, so let's go ahead and let's zoom in on our handout here. And what we're going to do, we're going to kind of be jumping back and forth. There we go. So welcome, welcome to Photography Fundamentals and Cloud Backup. Let's talk about what we're going to cover and what you'll need to. So the kind of the idea is that if we were in class, everybody would have their own computer, had the software loaded and everything, and then I'd have a handout. To, for everybody to kind of follow along with. So that's kind of what this is. It's a handout to kind of follow along. So let's talk about what we're going to need. And then we'll talk about uh, getting around Windows 10 Photos app, which is what we're going to be using today. And then we'll be talking about importing our photos, uh, starting slideshow, creating albums. A big thing about albums is kind of think about that as um, used to be a program a while back that would call it virtual albums. I know I have a little bit of sun uh, coming in from the window there. <laughs> so if I scoot up a little bit, maybe it'll just be on my shoulder, which is kind of funny. Anyway, so uh, the sun is out outside. That's I can tell you that's a positive thing. So we have, uh, we're talking about creating albums, editing, some doing some basic editing with our photos, sharing and emailing photos, printing, Upload into Google Photos and web albums, which Google Photos will be uh, uh, phasing out in July, uh, the free part of it, but we can upload our pictures until then, and we will still have access um, to them afterwards, they say. Uh, recommended software, okay. So before we get started, does anybody have any questions? All right, so let's talk about what we need. I'll go ahead and disappear so I'm not blocking the view. Well, what do we need? We need our our digital pictures, don't we? Okay. So if you got pictures on your digital camera, on your cell phone, or something like that, that's what you need to get started. Or you can have your pictures on your flash drive, SD card, or so, or so forth.
I'm back, sorry about that. So basically what's what we need is our different cords to plug into our devices. So USB to micro USB. Or plug it into our Android devices or our or our Apple devices. So one thing you may or may not, depending on what software you have loaded on your computer, you may need to install a driver for Apple to be able to access the files on your Apple device. So just kind of know that too. And we're going to be using the Microsoft Photos. So how do I make sure that I have Microsoft Photos? Microsoft Photos is uh, pre-installed. Well, I won't say pre-installed. I would say it comes for free with Windows 10. So just make sure that you, if you do not see uh, photos in your list of apps, um, just basically uh, make sure that your Windows is up to date or needs to be updated, and it'll download the, the newest version of Microsoft Photos. I have seen it where it kind of changes a little bit, so if you're, it's not the same as mine, it may be that your Windows is a little bit out of date, and all you need to do is just download the newest version of the update. All right, so let's talk about getting around Windows 10. And let's go ahead and get started. So if I go down here and I click the start button, if I did scroll down, you'll see one that says photos. Now the easiest way to do this, there's photos right there. The other easy way to do this is to basically use the search and then type in photos and the app will pull up, okay? So there's two ways of doing that, but we're looking for where it says Photos app. All right, it's loading. So let's go ahead and let's talk about our different sections and stuff. I'm actually going to go ahead and pull up an album that has some pictures on it. <laughs> Give me one moment. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to talk about getting around our Windows 10. So basically we have our Photos app and we click Start, we choose Photos, and then this pops up. Okay. Now this may not look exactly the way that I believe this is a little bit of an older version, but it's still talking there about collection, albums, and folder. Uh, you may see one that says people that's a newer thing that they've tried to add so that you can actually do like facial uh, identification on there to try to guess what the people are to kind of put them in groups okay we also have some of our other settings here the good part about the collection is that allows you to scroll through all of your pictures based on the time okay so it should show the newest pictures that you have on your computer first uh, to oldest Okay, so if we scroll down, it would show videos and it would also show our pictures as well. So the collection view is organized, uh, view is organized by date with your most recent shots at the top. To see your photos and videos organized into albums or folders, select albums or folders in the top navigation. Okay, albums or folders. So let's talk about, let's talk about that. So one of the things that we can do is we can actually create albums. So 
So if we're looking at our software here, let me show you. So if we have our sections here, we have our collection, we have albums, and we also have our folders as well. Folders is important, so if you need to add uh, mo or your pictures folders is the one that's been added um, automatically. But if you do have other folders that you want to add in there that's beyond the pictures folder in Windows, you can do that here. Okay. So if we go back to albums, and we actually have one here that's called Beach, we can actually create new. So we have our collection, all our pictures, we have our albums, and then we actually can create those like that. Now another thing that we have is we have it where it says import and we'll talk about creating an album in just a second. So we have our import pictures here. Um, we plug it in, we click the import button up here. It'll pop up and say is it from a folder? Is it from a device that you have plugged in? Phone, camera, something like that. It'll pop up, it'll scan. Right now it hasn't found anything so if I plugged in a USB stick or something it'll pop up and say, hey, we found a bunch of pictures, okay? You select the ones that you want by doing a, a checkbox system. The other thing is that if there's ones you don't want, you uncheck it, and it will have an option that allows you to organize the folders um, and how you want it to be folded. Um, organize, I actually recommend a day and month, okay, to organize those. So you click there, it'll, it'll it, when it imports, you can tell it to make sure to not download pictures it already has, which is a big one, okay? So that'll help you organize your um, pictures because it won't or it won't download something that it already has downloaded in the past. So if you're someone that uses a memory card with the camera and takes a bunch of pictures, downloads the pictures off of there, but it's not really, you know, full or anything, and you go, okay, well, let me plug it in again. Let me go, oh, I'm gonna go take some more pictures. And you plug it in and you go, okay, well, I want to import some pictures, but I don't want to have doubles of what I already imported. It won't do that unless you um, basically tell it to, okay? Now let's talk about our creating albums, okay? So we have our albums on here. You basically go up here, you click album, and it'll show a bunch of your pictures on there. And you can actually scroll down and add the pictures to there by clicking the little um, checkbox okay once you've done that it'll look similar to this with our beach here so this is some pictures I took at the beach so I've created an album added everything to the album and there we go right there now what if I want to see a slideshow it really is best to create an album and to basically do a slideshow that way And then if we go up here and I just click slideshow, it'll actually start doing a nice slideshow of our pictures, okay? There you go, and it just kind of rotates them again. So if one of your goals is, hey, I need something that's gonna do a quick slideshow, this is pretty much the best recommendation is just make an album, add some pictures or videos to the album, and then all you really need to do is then just click slideshow, okay? Now, let me see one thing. I think if I, okay, so, that's pretty much it. it makes it a very easy thing to do now the next thing it does is we'll talk about is that we can also um, we'll talk about our video editor in a little bit but you can do that if you click the watch button okay so it automatically makes a little bit of a short video and it makes it kind of animated and everything which we'll talk more about that in the um, video editing class okay We'll talk about that briefly here. Let me show it to you a little bit. Then we'll talk about doing more of our editing. 
So if I click the watch button, it's all going to automatically give it some music and stuff, give it some action animation more than just the slideshow does, and here we go. And because I gave it the title Beach, it actually gives it Now the funny thing about it is we actually have a remix button. Press that, it'll give it a second, it'll try a different theme. You may love it, you may not like it, it's just a start. Well that was really short. So did you see it just keeps remixing and remixing it. Kind of give you some ideas. If you do finish the video, you can save it. Or if you want to do a little bit more editing, let's click here where it says edit. And because we're dealing with an album and we already told it to create a video, it will actually have created our video down here, which kind of gives you a place to start. Okay. So if I do play, is it loading? It's thinking about it. Anyway, so here's our different pictures down here. I don't know why it's loading, but it's loading for some reason. Okay. Let me go back. I'm going to try that again. There we go. I don't know what. That is. the one that has okay might want to move that to the front so we just drag it over there now if you think the pictures are going by too fast you can choose a picture you can click here where it says duration let's make it three seconds Well, no, music ended. That may be why the music was so short or the videos are so quick because it was trying to match it with the music they made. Now, you can import any pictures you want, you just drag and drop them where you want them to go. You can add a title card as well if you want to. And if anything you don't like, you just delete. You can add text to the different pictures too. Let's say uh, text, say sunset. There you go. Choose where you want it to be.
working on our music here in a second. We can also add motion to our pictures as well. Choose what kind of motion you want them to have. Zoom in to center, see what that looks like. Okay. And you can also add some of filters as well. So if you say, okay, well, I like this, but I don't think everything has the right color frame. I will tell you, you'll watch movies and it's like, oh, this movie kind of has a greenish tint to it or a yellow or something. They're using like a filter on it to kind of convey a certain type of feeling. Okay. That looks interesting. Okay, let's see. is really short and there you go all right so other things we can do we won't dive into the 3d effects I'll just kind of show it to you real briefly in the camera, the actual camera class, we kind of get into adding really neat 3D effects and stuff. But we're going to go back to our video, our photo editing in just a little bit. But just realize you can do things, um, add some effects to stuff, like uh, it says snow. For some reason, you can just kind of add some things to your movies. for some reason you can also um, well, I won't go into the rest of that but you basically can choose what background music you want it has some that are already it has some that are already on here but you can choose what you want And you also can upload your own picture, or excuse me, your own audio if you want to. And it does support MP3 files and a whole bunch of other formats as well. So it kind of meaning for free, this is a pretty easy to use uh, video editor. Go up here, click finish. It'll ask you when you want to save it as. If you do have any glitch problems, click uncheck this. I've had a few glitch problems when I finish my video for some reason. So I have actually unchecked to use the hardware acceleration um, just on my computer personally. It will mean it's a little slower uh, creating something, but it is something you can upload to YouTube or any of the other social media stuff too. Okay, we just with a little bit ba basic editing. If I click up here, you can see where I can choose different themes. <laughs> So hopefully that'll give you some ideas. When you get done, it'll kind of overlay with it. And there you go right there. A good thing is anytime you do have an undo button that you can hit, and I'll actually do back and it actually will save a um, while we're editing it and stuff too. 
All right, since our different kind of slideshows, like I said, we go more into our video editing in our other class. Give you a little bit of idea. Let's talk about some of our photo editing here. So let's go back to our photo. I want to pick a photo. I think I'll choose this photo right here. Just click the photo, it'll pop up, and then you'll see things where it says you can zoom in. Allows you to zoom in and zoom out the picture if you want to. We also have our delete here. We can add something to our favorite if you want to. That's mostly just a placeholder for you to be able to find your pictures for later. Okay. This is also our uh, rotate a picture. So if it's it's uh, turned the wrong way, you can use that to fix that. Here's our crop feature. So if you want to crop a picture, and if you need to, as you see the rule of thirds kind of pops up. Over here, it will tell your aspect ratio. So if you are planning on printing something, um, you will be able to do the aspect ratio over here. Here's like a square or make sure it fits perfectly on a widescreen. You know, you're gonna make a, let's say a wallpaper out of this. You wanna crop it. There you go right there. And you can also do all undo. All right, so let's go keep going here. Go up here to our edit and create and we're going to go into editing now here's some new things add a 3d effect add some animated text which is pretty cool and there's our video editor program right there okay so let's go up here and uh, well, well let's talk about the other buttons before we leave so we actually have a share button on there as well click share easy to, to share pictures with Facebook or even email them as well depends on what you have set up so I actually do not have email set up on this computer so it actually will not show me show me the email but if you look down here it's easy to copy a file right there so you can paste it in the email and if you do have your mail set up in Windows 10 so the mail software it makes it very easy to, to send stuff that way but the copy paste takes care of a lot of issues okay Click there, copy paste, and then you can just hit paste to put something into an email. Now we also have our print, which is here. Since we're here, we're talking about our menu here. I'll continue here. This is just for printing at home. In a little bit, we'll talk about printing anywhere. It'll talk about the type of paper, glossy, formatted that you're looking for. What photo size are you trying to get at? Full screen, and so forth. Um, just kind of a recommendation. Uh, personally, I try not to print any kind of photos at home just because of the past having issues with either the paper, the ink, running out of ink, all kinds of stuff. It's just a little bit easier to go to the places like CVS, Walmart, Target. Um, Walgreens different places like that because it makes it a lot easier uh, to print stuff I recently ran into had to was printing something as a gift and I'll talk about the collage and stuff in a little bit too basically it was just one single picture I wanted to print I uh, went into a Walmart for some reason their machines were not working went into the, the CVS up the, up the street was able to plug in directly to my phone and then get the picture I wanted uh, from there fairly quickly and within about 30 minutes they had it printed and everything and I just had to walk around the store a little bit so I thought that was actually really good all right so let's talk about doing some basic editing So when we go over here and we hit our three dots, we'll get a whole bunch of other options here. Add to album, slideshow, save as. 
So if you ever do need to save a picture someplace else, do save as, it'll pull up here and you can save it to something else. This is the actual name of our picture, just like we talked about in yesterday's class. It has a bunch of numbers and stuff. It doesn't really call itself beach or whatever. Click the three dots. This, there's our copy right there to be able to copy and then paste our picture into something else. Here's an important one. Let's say you say, hey, I've got this picture on here. I want to be able to edit it with like the GIMP software or something. Click open with and it'll pop up here and look, I've got GIMP installed on my computer uh, as the photo editor. Click there, hit OK, and then I don't have to search for this picture. It's right there. It's, I don't even know, need to know the name of it. Boom, boom, click, and you're doing some more advanced editing on it. Another thing is we actually have a setting here. Whoop. I guess it's because I clicked. I guess I accidentally clicked it or something, or it thinks I did at least. It may take a second for it to open, though. Okay. <laughs> that was going to take that long. Anyway, it'll open up, and it should open up our picture if I click the right thing there, too. Look, and there's your picture. So the open with makes it very easy to open up pictures and other programs. Okay. The set as allows you to change the settings, which your lock screen is. And here's a big one, the background of your computer. Okay. What is your background? You just have to look and see what it is. But this allows you to make to change the background very easily. All right, so another big one here is having file info. For file info, here's our name, here's the day it was taken, how big the, the file size is, what the dimensions are, so we could print this fairly large, what it was, the camera settings were when the picture was taken, and there you go. Big one is the name, of course. All right, so. We talked about that. Let's talk about more editing. Okay, some advancement stuff that we enhancement stuff we can do. Of course, we talked about cropping out part of our photo you don't want to see. You know, rotating, aka the straightener. Okay, adjusting menu. We're going to talk about adjusting the lighting and the color. Spot fix, trying to fix blemishes. Red eye, remove red eye from varied photos. And then we'll talk about that. So let's go ahead and let's deal with the copy, excuse me, the edit. So let's go up here and let's click edit and create. And it'll give us some options here. Let's click where it says edit. Now we're kind of in the basic editor, okay? This will only allow you to do so, so much to a point. Uh, tomorrow we'll talk more about advanced photo editing, okay? Removing blemishes and stuff but this does have a little bit of basic stuff on it. Here's our straightening. Let's see, there's rotate right here. There's also flip. And if we go to filters, we actually just can choose from a different fil bunch of filters. Here's one that says automatic. Yeah, it kind of enhanced it. Now the good part about it, anytime we can go up here and hit the undo button, okay? We can kind of play around. Okay, or if we don't like that, do undo. Now, see here where it says save a copy? So if we make changes to something, save a copy means, and this is probably recommended, it means it will save a new copy for you. Okay, it'll give it a new name. You'll have your original copy as well, and you can choose which one you want to be. So if you don't, if you use this other feature, save, that means it's going to take whatever change you make and save on top of the original photo, which you may or may not want that. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to do undo. 
Let's go to adjustments. So here's we can change the light or the white balance. There's our color, less color, maybe too much. Kind of looks that makes it the circle thing on the inside. Gives it a little bit more of a focus on the middle. If you don't like do undo. Now we don't have a person here, so we'll just kind of pretend. We have our red eye reducer. Okay. So then we're supposed to just kind of tap on where the red eye is. If we do a picture, you just kind of notice it's kind of removing the the color a little bit there. So that could or could not work for you. Now what's our spot fixer? A spot fixer removes some blemishes. So you may it just kind of makes a little bit of area look a little more blurry. Okay. It's similar to what we'll be talking about tomorrow, but let's see, I don't think I can go as far as, yeah. So if I do spot, that kind of works, but then it has its limits as well. Yeah, so after a little bit of touch and go here, it allows you to delete some stuff. So if I mess around with this enough, Huh. Where's the zoom on here? Okay, there we go. So we'll just do a little bit back. So if it's a little bit, this one works okay with no one nearby. Let's see. Hit copy and Okay, so if I got, let's see. I'm trying to figure out exactly what the pattern is. Anyway,
Zoom out a little bit more. Huh. Interesting. I don't really know what the pattern is. Got it. So anyway, just using that, you could uh, filter out some pretty neat stuff. So tomorrow we'll be diving into making a little bit more um, focused on that. But the stop, the spot fixer, if you play around with it, looks like you can do a lot more with it than you think. Why that one just keeps sticking there? It's kind of annoying. Let's see if I zoomed in more. Can I do it? No. Like that's kind of like stuck in a glitch kind of area or something. Because we're zooming too much. No, it's like it's decided it's just not going to do any more. Okay. Boom. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So I could go and still say save a copy. So it's like an extra copy of what I did. So now let's talk about our photo albums, okay? All right, it's loading, hang on. Okay, where is uh oh no? 
Okay, so this is an album that I set up. So let's look at our Google Photos a little bit. And I'll actually venture to the website for that. No, I don't want it to be. Hang on, let's see. Oh, maybe I need to do that with. <laughs> that didn't work either. It's funny. Okay, hold on. Let's see. I was trying to show y'all, but it keeps logging me in anyway. There we go. So this is the About Google Photos page. You scroll down here, it'll talk about our photos. So a big one that we have going on is that not only is to access your photos online, but to also have it so it's you know, you can have it on your computer and you can back those up as well. Okay. So now I do know that there's the free service is going to expire and it's either June or July, but we can still upload pictures right now. And they said that we will still have access to pictures we've uploaded until then. And then there'll be like a service. I think they're going to go to a dollar or $2 a month. Um, to be able to continue this service to upload stuff. Um, the big, the best part about it is you can set it up so you can synchronize all your pictures on your device um, to the Google Photos and it'll automatically upload it, like if you're on Wi-Fi or something, okay? And you can see pictures, you know, only only you can see pictures unless you share. Um, so you share pictures with someone, only they can see them if you've shared it with them, okay? So it allows you to control the share of what you're sharing with someone. Let me show a little bit of an um, example of that. Well, let me walk you through this first, and I think they have like a little concept here. So imagine once you upload your pictures from your devices, you can access them like on an iPad or any place else. Good part, part about it is that the search does work pretty well. You could try to put in some keywords or something like the beach, or even if you've taken pictures with your phone, they should have like a GPS location on there to be able to find them that way. I've even put dog in a phone. I mean, a search and it's popped right up. So here's they've searched birthday. It's got a bunch of things that Google uh, thinks is a birthday. It could or could not be right. So let me show you this. That's not what I wanted, sorry. <laughs> no. So, I wanted to show you the, so we've looked at kind of our introduction here of our photos. It talks about logging in as well. But I am logged in on my other browser, and that's what I've been showing y'all. And I'm going to show you the albums 
with the plans because it's all I want to share right now. So basically, this is an album I made for a house plan I have. So let's talk about some of the things that we can do. Well, a big one is that we can actually share. So I created an album and I can actually do share and it'll pop up and I can type in someone's email address or even their phone number and it will actually send them a link, okay? And when it sends them a link, it actually will pop up and they can view that very easily. And I can actually later, and someone will say, okay, well, what if I don't want them to see the picture anymore or I don't want to share whatever that is anymore? Well, you can turn it off. So there actually is a menu where I can go in and choose to turn uh, the share off and it actually will show me all the previous files that I have shared, okay? Also, you can post stuff directly to either Facebook or Twitter's on here. Um, of course, you could do a copy paste if you want to like paste it into an email or so. Well, you're technically e email. Technically, this is emailing the pictures, so I won't say paste an email. So basically, we have our pictures here. We have one where they've turned into an animation because I took a bunch of pictures of a plant. And if we click a picture you'll actually see that we do have our share button, which is this odd symbol. Here's our zoom. Okay, hang on, where are you going? Here's information, so it shows information about the plant. Okay. It'll pop up and show, um, you can add it to your favorites. If you click here, you can see your everything in the slideshow. That's a good idea, let me show that. I click here and I click slideshow boom it does a full screen slideshow similar to what we were looking at before <laughs> there's our plant there's our plant. And just kind of hit the escape button to get out of there. Also, uh, what else we do? We do we can download it as well, add to another album, rotate. Now I won't get into this because mostly we talk about this in the photo printing class, but this is where you can print uh, prints. Now does Google print this stuff? No, actually it doesn't. You're actually, it's just going to connect you up with like a CVS or a Walmart. Um, is mostly what I see on here, okay? So if you say, oh, I want Google to print something, well, there you go. They also do um, photo albums and all kinds of stuff, but we'll talk about that more in our uh, photo uh, printing class. So we have our picture. I want to do a little bit of editing on it. Well, I just go up here and I click here, edit. Now, this will look kind of familiar to what we looked at a minute ago, okay? So first we have our nice auto. We have all kinds of different ones and we can actually control the intensity. Some things seem to be very subtle, but still interesting, okay. Click here, we can see the, the brightness More color, less color. Maybe you just want to, there's a ton. Maybe just a little hint. Add a little hint of green. Pop. What would pop be? Eh. And if you click here, it'll give you more options too. Exposure. And of course we have our thing where we can actually turn it if we want to too. Maybe if it's crooked in some way. I mean that kind of improved our picture for, since, since our plant now looks more like it's sitting uh, properly. Okay. It's kind of interesting. We'll do reset on that. We'll do done. So if we go back. I have to do out of here. What do I do? I have to do here. I've hit done, okay. So there's my done. Can I compare it to our other pictures? Oh, it does look like it has a little bit more life about it, doesn't it? 
All right, one big thing is uh, definitely try and download the Google Photo Scan um, app. And this is a big one that I talk about a lot, okay? So basically Google, Google Photos, you can share, you can control the share, you can upload there, download the app, and uh, do it that way as well, synchronize. And they also have a way that you can uh, synchronize and upload the pictures you already have on your computer um, as well. All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk about the Photo Scan app. I have a little video for this, and it's a fantastic app. I use it a lot. Uh, the big thing is it's really, its main job is to scan older photos so that you can have them on your computer. And what it does is it takes four photos and kind of puts them together and tries to cut out glare, make it look really good. And, uh, you know, and it'll even the video talks about it may not be as super high quality as let's say a photo scanner, but uh, with this, it's just a boop, 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 boop. And then you've got the picture uh, versus having to pull out the flatbed scanner and stuff like that. And it's completely free. So let's, let's play our little video here. Once upon a time, before there were smartphones, people took real photos printed on actual paper. Photos of siblings, of moms and dads, of birthday parties, of mullets, of grandma playing with dirt. Photos of the people that haunt your house and selfies before they were called selfies. These fragile pieces of paper are your memories. They're your family. They're your history. They're your regrets. So it's a good thing all those precious memories are safely backed up and perfectly organized in a nope. They're in a box in the attic, which is like the 87th best place they could be. <laughs> get, get. Maybe it's time to get out the gigantic flatbed scanner, find the right cord, download the driver, and bam. Photo saved forever. And bam. Wouldn't it be great if there was like a technology that was kind of like a mini scanner, like a handheld? Oh, hello. With the photo scan app, just hold your phone over any printed photo and go boop, 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 done. And you've got a high-res digital copy of the original without any glare. And it's not just a photo of a photo, because that looks like this. And if you have Google Photos, all your photos will be organized by face or place. It took you four and a half hours to get ready for this photo. The least you can do is spend a few seconds to scan it forever. Photos from the past, meet scanner from the future. Photo Scan by Google Photos. All right, so it's a big recommendation on there. It's a big help trying to get some, some photos on that you have basically like in a box and you're like, okay, well, I do want to get this up and share with folks. Pull it out just if you're just, you know, doing some housework you see a box of stuff pull them out take a few pictures like that and you can share them text them and then it's digitally uh, saved a uh, big recommendation too is here's our kind of comparison here a big recommendation too is that getting old photos reprinted uh, why do that well if you got them reprinted let's say in a book or just you know just a normal loose leaf picture you're more likely to share that with friends or family have that picture out and about. Uh, I could even see printing a, um, a book for a child, something that you know that they'll keep for a long time, uh, a photo book of a whole bunch of old photos and have the people labeled who they are. So you're saying this is your great grandfather, great grandmother, something like that. And the cool part about it is it's not the original picture. Sure, it may be something that's you know nice. You spent 20 bucks making it or whatever. But if a child kind of um, touches it or messes with it or something like that like well that's you know their copy I wanted them to see the pictures instead of it being well you can see these pictures every once in a while but don't touch them uh, kind of situation so being able to share pictures more pictures you know all kinds of stuff so that's that and big recommendation on that so let's talk about one really fun thing to do that you can do with your pictures. And this kind of uh, melds into our uh, video editing um, 
not our video editing, but our printing uh, crafts and stuff that you can do. But I'll show that here as well. And also talking about doing some more advanced photos, editing with GIMP and stuff. Okay. So I'll kind of show this off and then we'll kind of wrap up class. So photo collage, yeah. Right. Photo collage is kind of a fun thing to do. It allows you to upload some pictures. I think they've got, so basically you can add some pictures that you have on your computer. These are ones we use with the, the camera class. Tomorrow we'll be using these pictures. So I make a collage. Now the neat part about it is they do have some templates here and this is completely free. It does have some advertisement on it, but there are some sites where they make you jump through a hoop, a hoop where you have to give them your email address or something. Um, but here you don't have to do that at all. Um, you just click, click, and it just lets you download a high quality version of it. So, so you see they have lots of ideas. So what is a great gift? Uh, photo collage is a fantastic gift to give somebody. Okay, it's something they'll have forever. Uh, put it in an eight by, you know, print it as eight by ten, five by seven, or something. Um, you know, something bigger than like a four by six or a three by five. Even uh, you want it to be, you know, not huge but big enough that you can have a bunch of pictures on there. Um, I do know that sometimes our older pictures. Uh, with our cameras, it may be that those pictures aren't as high quality as some of the things we print now. So a collage is a great opportunity to use those older pictures that may not be as high resolution because then you can do stuff like this and put it on an 8x10. If you get bigger than an 8x10, you usually have to order it. But an 8x10, you can go to CVS, Walmart, Target or something and basically have it printed right there. Okay. In our, our printing class, we'll talk about uh, printing things for it to be, uh, you know, like a gift or something or, or paper, not paper, a gift or something to somebody and, um, you know, like a coffee mug or uh, one of the things that's interesting on there is we even talk about a poster. So you can get a, you know, like a movie poster, a poster uh, made and, uh, you know, they could even make a um, you know that draws some really neat ideas maybe you could get a theme to like an action movie or something and put the kids picture in there and stuff that would be kind of neat and then put them on the wall and then like an action star or something like that so anyway let's look here here's a whole bunch of different templates I really like how they kind of set them up this is kind of my classic one that I kind of go to using the old Polaroids and also do realize that I know I kind of tiptoeing into the 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 gifts thing situation here but do realize that uh you could print out a, a one gift for someone could be saying hey i'll print out a whole bunch of pit all the pictures that you want you know give them a number or something and then that could be a good gift for them too and some folks even get stuff like um little clips to put their pictures on the wall or an area or if they have like a a board or something to add pictures to so that could be a neat thing too so hopefully this will give you some neat ideas. I really like how the formats here are already set out. So you could pretty much just choose your pictures, click what you want, maybe move the pictures around a little bit, and then we have something really nice that you could print to know that they really like it. And you can make the background anything you want, okay? This one's a little bit more busy than what I would like, uh, but I do think this one is pretty interesting. Um, but I would choose kind of a, um, a background to an extent I guess uh, maybe like the wood or something and those are on here as well I kind of like this let's see love is neat let's choose this one for right now so we've got our pictures on here and then we can actually turn them like this we can change their size just like that uh oh, don't want to you choose a shape. Let's see. Put a 
border. I think I stretched it or something. There we go, that looks a little bit better. So you can move the pictures around. And if you go up here, you can actually choose the background as well, set background. It has a whole bunch that you can choose from. The wood grain ones are what I'm kind of leaning towards lately. Like this one I really like. Yeah, then they kind of bring it a little bit more alive. And your your frame doesn't have to be expensive too much. You can get your inexpensive frame. Just you know, try to make it. Try to choose one that has a little bit of style. I guess I'd say too, but doesn't clash with what your project is. Okay. So let's see. So if we kind of have them turn in a little bit here. Let me resize this one just a little bit. She's kind of taking up all the space. Now she's kind of in the middle. The only time you want it to, you know, overlay something else is when you know that it's the, the information there is, is, you know, it's, art, it's repetitive, I guess you could say. Now let's look at being able to uh, save our picture. Okay, so if we go up to collage, hit save image as, it'll pop up and give me a name. Let's say collage today is the 1st of 2021, I mean it's January of 2021. I hit save, it'll say where do you want to save to, it downloads it. download and then I can save it into my pictures area there you go all right so as you see it didn't ask me a bunch of email addresses or anything like that this actually recommends adding more pictures to the collage so you can do that too a lot of options one of the reasons I do cover this is because I had an older program uh, that had a built-in collage and we don't, but I always thought that was an excellent um, thing to learn how to use. All right, so I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up class here. Does anybody have any questions? I think we've covered a lot this afternoon. Big thing is backing up your pictures. If it's something's important enough, let's talk about what we covered today. We talked about what we needed. We talked about getting around Windows 10, the Photos app, importing photos, starting a slideshow, creating an album, editing our photos. We talked about sharing, emailing our photos, printing, uploading to Google Photos web, um, album sharing, and we also talked about our the the photo app that we use that to take care take old pictures. So let's go ahead and let's talk about what classes we're going to be doing tomorrow. So tomorrow at eleven o'clock, I'm going to be doing the Google Suite on the Grove Town Facebook page. So come join me for that. And tomorrow afternoon, we're going to be doing a really fun class. I think you'll like this. This is more advanced photo editing. So we just did a little bit of basic editing here. Um, we're gonna be doing some more, it's advanced photo editing. We're actually gonna be using the GIMP app uh, to, there's a picture of that guy we just saw. We, he has some mole in his face. We'll talk about removing blemishes. More than just a little bit of the spot removing we did with the Google Photos there. And come join me for that. Now next week we're gonna be talking about, let's talk about Libby free eBooks and audiobooks. Also, I'm going to be doing a cord cutting class, part two, uh, the streaming services, free and paid. And also, we're going to be doing that again, uh, the cord cutting antenna, and then the cord cutting, um, the streaming will be happening 
on Tuesday and on Wednesday and Thursday. So come join me for that. All three, all three libraries were doing a gadget help on the Facebook pages this month. So keep an eye out for that. I figure people are getting new stuff uh, from you know the holidays and stuff, and they were wanting to know how to use it and have questions about it and everything. Also, we're doing a chess class on the 27th. And we're actually going to be doing a live uh, demonstration with our Instapot on Facebook on, on uh, the 11th, excuse me, uh, <laughs> Grove Towns Facebook on the 28th at 11, and then at 2.30 on the Columbia County Library Facebook page, we're actually be doing a live uh, air fryer demonstration, so come join me for that as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking excited. I hope I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's going to be very exciting. And like I said, we're doing our Instapot. So maybe if you got an Instapot for uh, the holidays or Christmas or something, you know, come come join us for that morning, afternoon. It's going to be in my kitchen. So we'll get to see that live and everything. So there you go. Just a little bit of side note, if you are looking into getting some ebooks and um, free audiobooks, do you realize you can, we're switched over from um, RB Digital to Libby. Uh, with Overdrive, just download the Libby app, and then all you need is your library card, search Greater Clarksville Regional Library System, and then choose Georgia Download Destination, and then just type in your library card and you'll be good to go. Our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Of course, we're trying to stay safe and everything, keep everybody safe. We have, we're offering curbside holds pickup. You can go to gchrl.org for details about our hours and curb hold curbside pickup. It's a great service to use. Of course, you can call into the library at any time, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates. Yay! And if you're searching for our YouTube channel, just type in uh, GCHRL videos and it will pop right up. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned something new. I look forward to seeing you in a future class. Stay safe. <laughs> Have a great day. And bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>